Yashrael, I want to welcome to another broadcast of Living Branch Hebrew Assembly. Um, we're going to have a very interesting uh, king today to go over, but the interesting part will be uh, this is probably going to be a longer process. And what I mean by that is because of. Um, because of what we're doing, I uh, want to set this one up uh, to help you understand and to di discover what's going on. Because it, it is, uh, I would say, it's the first, he's the first king of Israel. So there's some things we need to look at to um, be able to. I would say to be able to um, see what he what's going on and what what he's doing and once we get that started we should be good to go because it's definitely going to be a good a good lesson uh, as far as I'm concerned so I pray that you have had a uh, wonderful Shabbat so far, and that the Father is um, blessing you with manifold blessings, and that you are seeking to do His will and His purpose, and just, you know, doing the things that pertain to Him. So, that being said, let's, um, let me just grab my iPad real quick. And we'll uh, pray and get this get this to going. Okay, let's see here. Let's pray. Baruch Hashem Yahuwah Elohim Melech HaAlam. Father, thank you for another uh, Shabbat that we've seen on the Gregorian calendar. We ask you, Father, to continue to set forth your purpose and help us to continue to seek and to do your will. We are forever grateful for you, Father, for allowing us to reach this far. We acknowledge and uh, we know that we wouldn't have made it this far without you. We're just asking you, Father, to continue to open our eyes that we see, to open our ears that we can hear and to have our hearts in tune so that we can do the things that pertain to scripture and that we can be witnesses of you and and also father that we can help others to see your greatness now we say toad off for another lesson in advance we're just asking you father to help us to see and know the character um, so that we can fine tune our lives to do and be um, what you've called us to be. We thank you now for all you're doing for us. Now, Father, be with us. Help us, Father, to be more like you. In the name of Shiach Yahusha, we say to our Father, for your greatness, in the name of Messiah Yahusha, Hallel to Yahuwah. Amen. All righty, Ms. Baka. Let's see. We got some things um, going here. I'm just trying to uh, get where I can see all of your comments um, that you might post. Um, they seem to have did some rearranging here. It's making it a, a little bit more interesting to navigate so uh, at this point I can't see your comments which I normally can so that's why I'm like mm, okay we'll we'll get it figured out all right so the first thing we want to do is look at the heart um, for the introduction 
of introduction for this particular king. Because he is the first king, we want to, there's some things we really want to look at pertaining to him. Because this is the king that starts everything. He's the first king uh, from a prophetic standpoint. And we want to look at his look at some background, um, look at uh, various things that this king is doing. Okay, I finally found where I need to be. So let me just type in here Shabbat Shalom to everybody. All right, we 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 uh, we rolling now. Okay, so this is going to be a great lesson, but. I wanted to go first and look at Psalms 19, verse 1 through 40, to try to, you know, it's going to help to set this lesson up because this is what we really need going into this lesson to understand some of the things that will happen during the reign of this king. So let's go over here to our scripture. And I want you to just listen and pay close attention to what is being said here. This will also, uh, if you looked at the chart that I had, looking into the heart, the mind, and how this king should operate. And whenever we get to King David, uh, Dawid, or Daoud, you're going to find some things out that you didn't know about him that was... Um, not put in your current translation on purpose, but it's in the Dead Sea Scrolls. But we'll talk about that when we get to King David. Okay, this is Olive Tehillim of Psalms uh, 119 verse one. Blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the Torah. Now see right there, just want you to see it does say Torah, look down at the bottom. Of Yahuwah. Blessed are they that keep his testimonies and that seek him, here you go, with the whole heart. Lib. So this is your mind, this is your thought process. And this is where you have to go. It's your whole, not part, but it's going to be all of you. That's seeking him. They also do no iniquity. They walk in his ways. Derek. Thou hast commanded us to keep thy precepts diligently. Oh, that my ways are directed to keep his statues. Hol. Hulk. Then shall I. I not be ashamed when I have respect unto thy commandments. I will praise thee with the uprightness of heart when I shall have learned of thy righteous judgment. judgments. I will keep thy statutes. Oh, forsake me not utterly. Bet. Wherewithal. Now, I want you to hold this verse. Because I want you to see how it describes him when he came, when he first came on the scene in, in Samuel. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his ways by taking he thereto according to thy word. With my whole heart have I sought thee, O oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Safain, to hide, is there. Blessed art thou, O Yahuwah, teach me thy statutes. With my lips have I declared all thy judgments, all the judgments of thy mouth. I have rejoiced in the way of thy testimony as much as in all riches. I will meditate in thy precepts and have respect unto thy ways. 
I will delight myself in thy statues. I will not forget thy word. Okay, and Gimel. Deal bountifully with thy servant that I may live and keep thy word. Open thy my eyes that I may behold thy wondrous things out of thy law, thy Torah. I am a stranger in the earth. Hide not thy commandments from me. So this psalmist had a, a yearning for the father's instructions. All of his instructions, his commandments, his statutes, his precepts, his judgments. My soul breaketh for the longing that thou hast unto thy judgments all the time. Thou hast rebuked the proud that are cursed, which do error from thy commandments. Notice this talk about the pride. I want you to hold on to pride when we go into this king. Remember from me, remove from me reproach and contempt, for I have kept thy testimonies. Princes also did sit and speak against me. But thy servant did meditate on thy statue. So he's showing you a mind frame here. Though people are talking against you because you're his servant, his servant meditates on him and not on the talk that's against you. Okay. Thy testimony also are my delight and my counselors. Dalit, my soul cleaveth unto the dust, quicken thou me according to thy word. I have declared my ways, and thou hearest me. Teach me thy statutes, make me to understand the way of thy precepts. So shall I talk of thy wondrous works. My soul melted for, hate, for heaviness. Strengthen thou me according to thy word. So notice everything flows back to the word in this. Remove from me the way of lying. Keep hold on to this and grant me thy law graciously or thy Torah. I have chosen the way of truth. Thy judgments have I laid before me. I have stuck unto thy testimonies, O Yahuwah. Put me not to shame. I will run the way of thy commandments when thou shalt enlarge my heart. Hey, teach me, O Yahuwah, the way of thy statutes, and I shall keep it unto the end. Give me understanding, and I shall keep thy law. Yea, I will observe it with my whole heart. So everything you hear this psalmist talking about is talking about keeping his law, keeping his statutes. Everything evolves around the Father. There's no I and what I want. And, you know, it's all about the Father. Make me to go in the path of thy commandments, for therein I delight, and climb my heart unto thy testimony, and not to covetousness. Turn away thy eyes from beholding, my eyes from beholding vanity, and quicken thou me in thy way. Establish thy word in thy servant, who is devoted to fear, to thy fear. Turn away my reproach, which I fear, for thy judgments are good. Behold, I have long after thy precepts quicken me in thy righteousness. So, as you can see, this psalmist really loves the father in his word. Okay, so let's go back over because that's just an introduction or basis. Now, I wanted to give you, because we're talking about King Saul or Shaul, where this prophecy came from and what the father had said concerning when they wanted the king. It's in Deuteronomy 17 chapter, 14th verse. This is what the father Yahuwah says. 
When thou art come into the land which Yahuwah thy Elohim giveth thee, and shall possess it, and shall dwell, there, dwell therein, and shall say, I will set a king over thee, like as all the nations that are about me. So when they come into the land possessing and shall dwell therein and shall say, now they want a king. Thou shall in any wise set him king over thee whom Yahuwah thy Elohim shall choose. First the father has to choose him. One from among the brethren thou shall set king over thee that thou um, thou mayest not set a stranger over thee, which is not thy brother. So he had to come from one of the 12 tribes. But he shall not multiply horses to himself, nor cause the people to return to Egypt to the end that he should um, multiply horses. So this king was not supposed to get a whole bunch see horses were a symbol of of might all the armies of the past would have a lot of chariots horses and that's how they would um gauge how strong they were so this king multiplying horses might fall victim to thinking he had the strength instead of thinking that the father was the one that gives him victory. So he wasn't supposed to multiply horses because except, remember the psalmist also said, except Yahuwah keep the city, the watchers watch if in vain. So, awake if in vain. Um, so this is uh, where we're supposed to rely on the Father, okay? And it says, for as, uh, for as much as Yahuwah has said unto you, you shall henceforth return no more that way. <laughs> now, here's one that's often misconstrued, but we're not going to get really um, in I'll just glance over it. Uh, Neither shall he multiply wives to himself that his heart turn not away. So the subject here is not so much having a bunch of wives, but it's what they're going to do to your heart. And we see, we'll see we see that example whenever we get to uh, Solomon or Shlomo, because he took foreign wives and the scripture says that his wives turned his heart away from Yahuwah. Neither shall he greatly multiply to himself silver and gold. So his richness was supposed to be the father. You know, it wasn't supposed to be the accumulation of wealth. And it shall be when he shall sit upon the throne of his kingdom that he shall, notice this, write him a copy of this law or Torah in a book out of that which is before the priest of the uh, Levites. And it shall be with him, and he shall read therein all the days of his life, that he may learn to fear Yahuwah his Elohim, to keep all his words, uh, keep all the words of this law or Torah, and the statutes to do them. So he's supposed to guard them and do them. Same principle that was in the garden. That his heart be not lifted up above his brethren, that he turn not aside from the commandments to the right hand or to the left to the end that he may prolong his days in his kingdom, he and his children in the midst of Israel. So now let's go to the scenario where all of this starts to take place, where we're building up to the first king of Israel. So let's go back over to 1 Samuel chapter 8. Okay, and let me make this a little bit bigger. Okay. 
want to make sure you can see it. Okay, now we're going to start in verse 1. This is the chapter that this transpires in. And it came to pass when Samuel was old that he made his sons judges over Israel. Now the name of his firstborn was Joel, and the name of his secondborn, uh, and we'll Abiyahu. They were judges in Beersheba, and his sons walked not in his ways, but turned aside to lucre. And took bribes and perverted judgment. Okay, so you can see, you know, they didn't follow their father's footsteps. And this paved the way for Israel asking for a king. Then all the elders of Israel gathered themselves together and came to Samuel in Ramah and said unto him behold thou art old thy sons walk not in the, thy ways now make us a king to judge us like all the nations wasn't this prophetic right there you see it we saw it back in Deuteronomy but the thing displeased Samuel when they said, give us a king to judge us. Because he wanted, you know, he had his sons in place. But of course, his sons weren't living up to what they were supposed to be doing. Because they were doing what? They were taking bribes. They were all about money. And Samuel prayed unto Yahuwah. And Yahuwah said unto Samuel, hearken unto the voice of of the people and all they say unto thee. For they have not rejected thee, but have rejected me, that I should reign over them. According to all the works which they have done since the day that I brought them up out of Egypt, or Mitzrayim, even unto this day, Wherewith they have forsaken me and served other mighty ones. Do so, uh, so do they also unto thee. Now therefore hearken unto their voice. Howbeit yet protest solemnly unto them and show them the manner of king that shall reign over them. And Samuel told all the words of Yahuwah unto the people that asked of him a king. And he said, this will be the manner of the king that shall reign over you. He will take your sons and appoint them for himself, for his chariots and to be his horse, horsemen. And some shall run before him, before his chariot, and he will appoint them captain over thousands and Captains over 50 and will set them to ear his ground and to reap his harvest and to make his instruments of war and instruments of, of his chariot. And he will take your daughters to be um, confectionaries and to be cooks and to be bakers. So it, it's telling you what, what this king is going to do. It's going to be all about him and a confectionery that's Raka Ha Raka Ha and that's a female perfume make you smell good you know everybody likes smell well at least I hope you like to smell good but we're gonna let that one go <laughs> and he will take your fields and your vineyards and your olive uh, yards and even the best of them and give them to his servants. He will take the tenth of your seed and of your vineyards and give to his officers and to his servants. So normally it went to the Levites, 
but he's going to give it to his servants. Okay, I'm just want you to catch what he's saying here. And he will take your manservants and your maidservants and your goodly men and your donkeys and put them to his work. He will take a tenth of your sheep and you shall be his servants. And you shall cry out in that day because of your king, which you have chosen, which which you shall have chosen you, and Yahuwah will not hear you in that day. Okay, so he told them all this stuff the king's going to do. But notice, just like people do sometimes, they hard headed. You can tell them up front. This is what's going to happen. If, you, if you're with this person or if you do this, this is the, what's going to happen. But notice what, what goes on here. Nevertheless, the people refuse to obey the voice of Samuel. And they say, nay, but we will have a king over us. Melech. So you ever been warned, maybe when you were younger, don't hang out with these folks. You're going to get in trouble. But you wanted to hang out with them anyway. Oh, they're my friends. They would never do me wrong. Then the next thing you know, you got in trouble. Okay. Okay. That we also may be like the nations. So they didn't want to be set apart. They wanted to be like the nations. And that our king may judge us and go out before us and fight our battles. So they think the king going to fight the battles for them. Okay. And Samuel heard all the words of the people. And he rehearsed them in the ear of Yahuwah. And Yahuwah said unto Samuel, Hearken unto their voice, make them a king. And Samuel said unto the men of Israel, Go you every man to his city. Okay, now we come to, to some uh, good stuff. Remember, this is an introduction. So we're not going to go into all the things of Saul today. I, I'm just setting this up. Okay. So let's look at verse one of Samuel, the first chapter. I mean, ninth chapter, verse one. Now there was a man of Benjamin, whose name uh, whose name was Cush, the son of Abiel, the son of Zohor, the son of Bakurath, the son of Aphia, a Benjamite, a mighty man of power. And he had a son whose name was Shaul of Saul. A choice young man. And you remember what we read about in Psalms, how shall a young man cleanse his ways? And it was by taking heed to thy word. A goodly, and there was not among the children of Israel a goodlier person than he. For his shoulders and upward he was higher than any other people. So I want to give you the characteristics of the tribe of Benjamin. If you can comprehend some of the characteristics of Benjamin. When you see some of the characteristics of, of Shaul or Saul, you will start to understand and put the pieces of the puzzle together of why he act the way he act. Okay, so let's look at when Benjamin was born. In Genesis chapter 49, verse 27, in 28. Uh, no, excuse me, not when he was born, but um, what was the prophecy? And then we'll talk about when he was born. And Benjamin, 
shall ravit, raven as a wolf. In the morning he shall devour the prey, and at night he shall devour, devour, excuse me, he shall uh, divide the spoils. And all these are the twelve tribes of Israel, and this is uh, and this is it that uh, their father spake unto them, bless them, everyone according to his blessing he blessed them. So he is typed as a wolf, a predator. So I want you to keep that. Maybe in the beginning of the next lesson, we'll go over some of the characteristics of how a wolf acts. But notice when Benjamin was born. Um, I, and I'll just read it. The name Raquel gave the child Ben-Oni, son of my sorrow would not do for the lad, Yaakov renamed Benjamin, renamed him Benjamin, son of my right hand. Yaakov turned this occasion of sorrow into triumph and victorious prospects. So to his mother, because she was dying, because she when she gave birth, she died, son of my sorrow. But the father called him son of my right hand. Then when he get when he gathered all his sons when, uh, together, and he was telling them, giving them insight. Uh, in Genesis the forty ninth chapter, he talked about Benjamin being a wolf. And let's just go back over here. Let's see. Did I have the 40? We'll look it up though. Let's go to 49. And he talks about, he goes through all of his sons. And then he talks about Benjamin shall be. Now, let's look up this raving. That way we can kind of get, get an idea. It's Got a tetarish and a um, pay. So this is taraf to pluck off or to pull pieces. Now this is talking about prey. So you know how a wolf when they kill, they just pulling pieces off. It's also translated as catch, feed, rend into peach pieces, to tear. So I want you to get what he's doing. So in the morning he's going to he's going to eat the prey, and at night he's going to divide or share the spoils. So let's go back. Okay, now we're going to read some more about the tribe of Benjamin because you uh, we're not going to go into Saul today, but I want to show you some more about the characteristics of those that came from the tribe of Benjamin and that people. They were no joke. So we're going to Judges, the 19th chapter. Judges 19. And we're going to read the 19th and 20th chapter. This is going to help us to see some things. So I want you to pay close attention to the story. And keep in mind, this is an introduction. It's going to help us to understand some of the actions of King Shaul in the future. And it came to pass in those days when there was no king in Israel that there was a certain Levite sojourning on the side of the Mount of Ephraim to take to take to him a concubine out of 
Bethlehem Yehuda and his concubine now I want you just keep this in mind because sometimes people read this story and they forget this piece of information and his concubine played the whore against him Zana and went away from him unto her father's house in Bethlehem, Yehuda, and, and was there four whole months. And her husband, so even a concubine was considered um, a wife. The difference was she didn't, her children didn't have the inheritance rights. And you can find that back over in um, Genesis, where it says that Abraham sent the sons of the concubines away but he gave them gifts. And his concubine played the harlot against him and went away from him unto her father's house to Bethlehem, Yehuda, and was there four months, four whole months. And her husband arose and went after her. He spoke friendly unto her and to bring her again, having his servant with him and a couple of donkeys and she and she brought him into her father's house. And when her father of the damsel saw him, he rejoiced to meet him. And his father-in-law, the damsel's father, retained him. And he abode with him three days. So they did not, so they did eat and drink and lodge there. And it came to pass on the fourth day when he arose early in the morning that he arose up to depart and the damsel father said unto his son-in-law, comfort thy heart with a morsel of bread and afterwards go thy way. And they sat down and did eat and drink, both of them together. For the damsel's father had said unto the man, be content, I pray thee, and tarry all night. Let thy heart be merry. And when the man arose up to depart, the father-in-law urged him, therefore, if he lies there again, and he arose early in the morning on the fifth day to depart. And the damsel father said, Comfort thy heart, I pray thee. And they tarried until afternoon, and they did eat, both of them. And when the man rose up to depart, he and his concubine and his servants, and his father-in-law, the damsel's father, said unto him, Behold, now the day draweth towards evening. I pray you tarry all night. Behold, the day groweth to an end. Lodge here that thy heart may be merry. Tomorrow get you up early on your way that you that thou mayest go home. But the man would not tarry that night, but he rose up and departed and came over against Yebus, which is Jerusalem. And there were with him two donkeys saddled, his concubine also with him. And when they were by Jebus, now keep in mind, if you go back and, and research Jerusalem, is actually in the tribe of Benjamin. It's in the tribe of Benjamin. So they were by Jebus, and the day was far spent. And the servant said unto his master, Come, I pray thee, let us turn into the city of the Jebusites and lodge in it. So remember, Jerusalem wasn't established at this particular time. So the city of the Jebusites is actually Jerusalem now. So Jebus. So that was where, that was the land that was allotted to Benjamin. Okay.
And his master said unto him, We will not turn aside hither into the city of a stranger that is not of the children of Israel. We will pass over to and this in Hebrew is you would pronounce it Gib Yah. Uh, excuse me, Gib Ah. So remember Benjamin and Yehuda were considered the southern tribes. So when he talked about the children of Israel, he's talking, and, and this is just talk, he's talking about the rest of the tribes. Even though this concept doesn't come, hasn't come about as of yet when the um, tribes are divided after Solomon, you can all you can see this almost at work here and he said unto his servant come let us draw nigh to one of these places to lodge all night in Gilah, gib ah or in ramah and they passed on and went their way and the sun went down upon them when they were in gib ah which belongeth to as i said Benjamin. They were, in the, they were in the Benjamin area. And they turned aside thither to go in and to lodge in Gibah. And when they went in, he sat down in a, uh, in a street of the city. For there were no men that took them into their house, in his house to lodging. Interesting. And behold, there came an old man from his work out of the field at evening, which was also of Mount Ephraim. And he sojourned in Gibah, but the men of the place were Benjamites. Okay, I want you to follow the storyline. And when he had lifted up his eyes, he saw a wayfaring man in the street of the city. And the old man said, Whether goest thou, and whence cometh thou? And he said unto him, We are passing from Bethel, Yehuda, towards the south of Mount Ephraim. From thence am I. And I went to Bethel, Yehuda, but I am not going to the house of Yahuwah, for there is no man that receiveth me to house. Yet there is both straw and provenders uh, for your donkeys, and there is bread and wine also for me, and for thy handmaiden, and for thy young men which is with thy servants. There is no way, no want of anything. And the old man said, Peace be unto thee. Howsoever, let all thy wants lie upon me, only lodge not in the street. So he brought him into his house and gave food or fed him, or Baal, Balal, excuse me, Balal, provindles, ders, unto the donkeys, and were, and they washed their feet and did eat and drink. So, I hope you're getting this. This man. When, when we're looking here, he was from the same area that um, the sojourner with the concubine was. And behold, there came an old man from his work out of the fields at evening, which was also of Mount Ephraim. So he exhibited a different character. That's what I'm trying to help you to see. 
the men of Benjamin didn't take this man in. There was no place for him to lodge. He was in the streets. But this man from uh, from the same region, Mount Ephraim, is him. Took him into his house and said, let your wants and needs basically be upon me. Even though I know you have, and the man told him, I got stuff. I just need a place to lodge. You don't have to feed my donkeys. You don't have to feed me or my servants. I got all that covered. I just need a roof over my head for the night so I won't be in the street. And so the man took him in and was hospitable. Okay. So keep in mind Benjamites and that wolf trying to set this up for next week. This Because it's going to get real interesting when we start to see. Because uh, you got to remember, a wolf is not tame. A ravaging wolf, you know, hey, they say the the they always use that thing, the strength of the uh pack of whatever they say the strength of the pack is the wolf and the uh, strength of the wolf is the pack yeah that's it <laughs> but when it comes to any anyone out of their pack that's if you're not in their pack they would tear you up so you could be a wolf but if you're not in their pack they will tear you apart. So this is why you're seeing this characteristic. Because this man was not of their pack. He was not a Benjamite. Okay, and you're going to see some more stuff here as we go on. And trust me, I want you to keep all of this stuff in mind for next week's lesson when we start to go into King Shaul then his character is going to make sense to you. Because David or Daoud or Dawid or David is not of the same pack as King Shaul. Or we'll just say the same tribe. So anybody that's not in his pack is an enemy. Okay, are, you, are you, you all hearing this? I hope it's making sense to you. I know it's, I'm teaching this a little bit different, but I'm trying to do this so that when we start go, walking this thing out with King Shaul, it's going to make sense to you. Okay, now let's keep going. Now, Now as they were making their hearts merry, behold, the men of the city, certain sons of Belial, isn't that interesting? Now if you remember this, you research this in scripture. These did not keep the commandments. Look up the star. You don't even have to look it up. I did a lesson. Uh, I think it was a two-part series. I can't remember, but it was the Sons of Belial. And it talked about their character. And if you want the Hebrew, it's Baliyah. All, Baliyao. Okay, if you want the Hebrew, but for this, and that means wickedness, worthless, good for nothing. If if you want to look it up, it, we, we'll look it up here. Comes from two words. Okay, and you can look, you can see these words right here. This word is uh, Bali. That means failure. Nothing or destruction. Um, and it's translated corruption for a lack of where no is. So it's, it's not good. And then the other comes from ye all to be valuable, useful, benefit. 
But when you put them together, it's without profit, worthlessness. Uh, by extension, destruction, wicked. And it's translated evil, naughty, ungodly, men, or wicked. So you see it here for yourself. And where is this coming from? This is coming from the children of the tribe of Benjamin that this, the sons of Belial were there in the midst of them. So let's check out this character. Beset the house round about and beat at the door and speak to the master of the house. The old man saying, bring forth the man. Father, help us that came into thy house that we may know him. You died. So what do you think that is? This is why they are termed the sons of Bilal. They wanted to have sex with him. And this is in ancient times. So some of the stuff you see in the day ain't new stuff. It's right there in scripture. And, and check it out. This was right in the midst of Benjamin. These sons were there. And the man, and the man, the master of the house, went out unto them and said unto them, Nay, my brethren, nay, I pray you, do not such wickedness, ra'a, ra'a, Seeing that this man is coming to my house, do not this frolly. Nibala. It's a disgraceful thing. Behold, here is my daughter, a maiden, and his concubine. Now, notice here, it translates that as maiden, but it really should say virgin because it's Batula. Batula refers to a virgin. Okay, a virgin. Meaning to separate. In other words, she's not joined to anyone. She's a virgin. She hasn't had sex. And his concubine. Them I will bring out now. Humble you them and do with them what seems good unto you. This is the same principle that you saw in the story of Sodom and Gomorrah. Where when someone came under your roof, you assumed protection for them because they were there. This was just built into the culture. And because remember, um, Lut a lot said, let me give you my two virgin daughters. But they didn't want that. They were so corrupt. They wanted the men. Okay, but enough on that. But unto this man, do not such vile, vile a thing. But the men would not hearken to him. So they took, so the man took his concubine and brought her forth unto them, and they knew her. Now remember, this concubine, I know y'all saying, you know, some didn't read what we read before. This concubine had already played the harlot. Okay, so, you know, don't look at this as a cruel thing. She had already been out there being a harlot. That's what it says. Because she went back to her father's house four months for, uh, because she had played the harlot. But we'll go on. And abused her all night until the morning. And when the day became, began to spring, they let her go. These men were, who father. Then came the woman in the dawning of the day and fell down at the door of the man's house where her, her sovereign or her master was till it was light. And her adon or sovereign, rose up in the morning, opened the door of the house, and went out to go his way. And behold, 
the woman his concubine, was fallen down at the door of the house, and her hands were upon the threshold. And he said unto her, Up and let us, uh, let us be going, for none but none answered. Then the man took her up upon his donkey, and the man rose up and got him into his place. And when he was coming to his house, he took a knife, laid hold on the concubine, and divided her, um, and divided her together with her bones into twelve pieces, and sent her out into all the coast of Israel. And it was so that all that saw it said, there was no such deed done nor seen from the day that the children of Israel came up out of the land of Mitzrayim, Egypt, unto this day. Consider of it, take advice, and speak your mind. Okay, we got one more chapter to go. We got to read this chapter. This is going to uh, help us to see some things. Still, we're still seeing more. I hope this is helping. Um, someone asked me the question, um, can you do some lessons on the character of the other tribes also? Well, we'll see as we go along, we'll, we'll try to, uh, as we're covering the Kings, we'll try to, um, uh, uncover different characteristics according to the tribes. Okay. Then all the children of Israel went out. And the congregation was to get gathered together as one man, even from Dan unto Beersheba, with the land of Gilead unto Yahuwah in Mitzpah. And the chief of all the people, even all the tribes of Israel, presented themselves in the assembly of the people of Elohim. 400,000 footmen that drew sword. Now the children of Benjamin heard that the children of Israel were gone up to Mitzpah. Then said the children of Israel, tell us how was this wickedness? And the Levite and the Levite, the husband of the woman that was slain answered and said, Hmm, interesting. So is this right here suggesting that the man that divided the concubine and Levite? Hmm, we'll see. I came to Gabia that belongs to Benjamin. I am my concubine. So he was a Levite. Isn't that interesting? But, you know, we don't ever read of, um, well, we do now, but uh, you see where a Levite ha has a concubine. Interesting. But we know that a Levite couldn't, they were forbidden um, if they, uh, you know, Aaron, the priest, were forbidden from taking anyone other than a virgin. But we'll, we'll go on with that. <laughs> and my concubine to lodge. And the man of Gilbiah rose against me and beset the house round about upon me by night and thought to have slain me. And my concubine have they forced that she is dead. In other words, they forced her to have sex. And I took my concubine and cut her into pieces. That kind of is, explains how he knew how to cut things into pieces. He was a Levite, so he knew how to do sacrifices. Okay. And sent her throughout all the country of the inheritance of Israel. For they have committed lewdness and frolly in Israel. Behold, you are all children, all children of Israel. Give here your advice and counsel. And all the people rose up as one man saying, we will not any of them go to his tent. Neither will we 
any of us turn into his house. But now this shall be the thing which we would do at Gilbiah, I mean Gilah, we will go up by lot against it. And we will take ten men of a hundred throughout all the tribes of Israel. Now, isn't this kind of interesting? They took ten men, and when the tribes were divided, it was divided ten and two. Hmm. And a hundred of the thousand, and a thousand out of ten thousand. And to fetch uh, victuals for the people that we that they may do, and when they come to Gibeah of Benjamin, according to all the frolic that they have wrought in Israel, so all of the men of Israel gathered against the city and knit together as one man, and the tribe of Israel sent throughout all. Throughout all the tribe of Benjamin, saying, What wickedness is this that is done among you? Now, therefore, deliver us the men, the children of Bali Yaal, which are in Gab Yah, Gab Ah, that we may put them to death and put away evil from Israel. Notice this. This sounds like a wolf. But the children of Benjamin would not hearken to the voice of their brethren, the children of Israel. So they would not give them those men who seem, from all that we see in the text, were Benjamites that were um, tamed as, uh, that were the children of Bilal. Bali, y'all, they wouldn't give them to them. They're protecting. So when you protect wickedness, that means there's some wickedness in you. You don't protect and uphold wickedness. Interesting. But the children of Benjamin gathered themselves together out of the cities unto Gab, Gab, yeah, Gab Ah. To go to battle against the children of Israel. And the children of Benjamin were numbered at the time out of the cities. Twenty and six thousand men that drew sword. Besides the inhabitants of Gibeah, Gibeah. Which were numbered seven thousand chosen men. Among all this people. There were seven hundred chosen men left handed. That's interesting. Everyone could sling stones at his hair breadeth and not miss. And the men of Israel beset Benjamin were numbered. Four, now listen to this. 400,000 men that drew swords. All these were men of war. And the children of Israel rose up and went out to the house of Elohim. And asked counsel of Elohim and said, Which of us shall go up first to battle against the children of Benjamin? And Yahuwah said, Yehuda shall go up first. And the children of Israel rose up in the morning and encamped against Gob Ah. And the men of Israel went out to battle against Benjamin, and the children of Israel put themselves in array to fight against them at Gabah. And the children of Benjamin came forth out of Gabah and destroyed down to the ground the Israelites that day twenty and two thousand men. Wow. Now, the father told them to send Yehuda first. They went, they got their butts kicked. Isn't that something? Because the, the children of Benjamin, that tribe, were like wolves. 
they're going to fight to the bitter end. They don't, you know, this is no joke for them. And you can see this in their character. And the men of Israel encouraged themselves and set their battle again in array in the place where they put themselves in array the first day. And the children of Israel went up and wept before Yahuwah until evening, asked counsel of Yahuwah, saying, Shall I go up again to battle against the children of Benjamin, my brother? And Yahuwah said, Go up against him. And the children of Israel came near against the children of Benjamin the second day. And Benjamin went forth against them out of Gabah the second day and destroyed down to the ground the children of Israel again, 18,000 men. All these drew the sword. Isn't that something? So day two, Benjamin destroyed them again. But they had asked counsel, shall we go up? Hmm. So some, sometimes when you have evil rooted in Israel, it's going to be a battle to, to, to pull this evil up out of Israel. Okay, then all the children of Israel and all the people went up and came unto the house of Elohim and wept and sat there before Yahuwah and fasted that day until Eve and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings before Yahuwah. And the children of Israel inquired of Yahuwah for the Ark of the Covenant was there in those days. And Phineas, the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron, stood before it in those days, saying, Shall I yet again go up to battle against the children of Benjamin, my brother, or shall I cease? And Yahuwah said, Go up, for tomorrow I will deliver them into thy hands. And the children of and Israel set liars in wait. So those they set an ambush is basically what it's saying. Round about Gilbah and the children of Israel went up against the children of Benjamin the third day and put themselves in array against uh, Gabah as at other times. And the children of Benjamin went out against the people and were drawn away from the city. And they began to smite the people and kill as at other times in the highways. And, excuse me, of which one goeth up to the house of Elohim. And the other to Gibah in the field, about 30 men of Israel. And the children of Benjamin said, They are smitten down before us, as at the first. But the children of Israel said, Let us flee, and draw them from the city unto the highways. And all the men of Israel rose up out of their place, and put themselves in array at Baal Tamar. And the liars, or those that wait in ambush, uh, in weight of Israel came forth out of their place, even out of the meadows of Gabah. And there came against Gabah 10,000 chosen men out of all of Israel. And the battle was sore, but they knew not that evil was near them. And Yahuwah smote Benjamin before Israel. And notice it said Yahuwah did it. Because all the other times who who they got they, they got beat down. And the children of Israel destroyed of the Benjamites that day twenty and five thousand and a hundred men, all who who uh those drew the sword. So the children of Benjamin saw that they were smitten. 
for the men of Israel gave place to the Benjamites because they trusted unto the uh, liars in wait which they had set beside Gabah. And the liars in wait hasted and rushed upon Gabah, and the liars in wait drew themselves along and smote all the city with the edge of the sword. Now there was a pointed sign between the men of Israel and the liars in wait that they uh, that they should make a great flame with smoke rise up out of the city when the men of Israel retired in battle. Benjamin began to smoke and to kill the men of Israel, about 30 people, for they said, Surely they are smitten down before us, as in the first battle. But when the flame began to rise up out of the city with a pillar of smoke, the Benjamites Look behind them, and behold, the flame of the city ascended up to Shamaim of heaven. And when the men of Israel turned again, the men of Benjamin were amazed, for they saw that evil was come upon them. Therefore, they turned their backs before the men of Israel unto the way of the wilderness, but the battle overtook them, and them which came out of the city, they destroyed in the midst of them. Thus they enclosed the Benjamites round about and chased them and trodden them down with ease over against Galbah Gal towards the sun rising. And there fell of Benjamin 18,000 men. All these were men of valor. And they turned and fled toward the wilderness unto the rock of uh, Rimah. And they gleamed of them in the highways, 5,000 men, and pursued hard after them unto Gadam, and slew 2,000 men of them, so that all which fell that day of Benjamin were 20 and 5,000 men that drew the sword. All these were men of valor, but 600 men turned and fled to the wilderness unto the rock of um, Ramon. Abode in the rock of Ramon four months, and the men of Israel turned again unto the children of Benjamin, smote them with the edge of the sword, as well uh, as well the men of every city as the beasts and all that came to hand. Also they set all set on fire all the cities that came, cities that they came to. So, the, I just want you to, the reason I gave you that, I want you to see the disobedience that was exhibited in the tribe of Benjamin. That was just an example. And remember, the character of Benjamin is going to be a wolf. So that you can see that this is definitely something because when you look here Shaul as we are stating or Saul and the reason I say Shaul is because the Hebrew has a Samic and a Shin so you know they would be you can't I, I don't pronounce both of them as that so Unless I'm just reading classical Hebrew, I, I pronounce when I see a shin as S-H. So, Shaul. But notice, he's from the tribe of Benjamin. And you're going to see some of this character play out. So, wow. 
I didn't realize it went that long. <laughs> so this is just the introduction. So what we're going to do next week, next week we're going to get into Shaul and playing some of this out. So go back and read over some of this. I'm telling you, this is always helpful when you're dealing with this stuff. And that's, uh, I was wondering why the father waited so long because I've been thinking about it all week, but he just, he didn't put it in my Ruach to, to, um, to really dig. And uh, I was like, okay, father, what's going on? And then when I started to, uh, to really go into it, it's like, okay, I want you to go back and I want you to show them this first king. And I want you to show them the characteristics of that tribe and what was prophesied about that tribe, what their father said, and give them some of their acts that they did. So this will be a, like an introductory for King Shaul. So hopefully this uh, introduction is going to set us up for, uh, and it might be, I might have two more parts. I'm not sure. I'm not going to try to cram all this into one lesson because I think we'll miss, uh, we'll miss some things. But I wanted you to see the characteristic, characteristics of this tribe and how they conduct business. And some of the things that they did uh, in scripture before we even get to um, King Saul or Shaul. So I pray that this introduction has been a blessing um, to you. That it will, uh, when we start to go through this, that it will definitely give you insight. Uh, the program that I use... Uh, for um, this is called Accordance. You can go to accordancebible.com um, and you'll be able to uh, see it. They make it for Windows and they also make it for um, it's they make it on Windows platform, Mac platform. But probably in the near future, uh, I'm still trying to uh, get my skill level. I'm a, um, I might use the program Logos because it has a lot more features and packages that you can do in that. So that's Logos um, Bible software. So you'll see that in the near future. So uh, just keep me in prayer. And that the Father will use these lessons to try to show us. Because some of our people, uh, you know, you can see the characteristics of the Benjamites in them. You know, because trust me, this is, these characteristics are undeniable uh, when you see how people operate. All right. Now, make sure, um, I always say, um, you know, we're just going to pray. Pray for righteousness in our lives. That, that's what we want. We want what we read from Psalms 119, verse 1 through 40. We want to exhibit that righteousness. So as we pray. Baruch Hashem Yahuwah, Elohim Malach HaAlam. Father, thank you for the lesson today. Father, thank you for our listeners. And I pray, Father, that this lesson... Help them to understand as we go into, uh, you know, which king are you, King Shaul, that we'll get a, a better understanding of why he was the way he was. And we'll even show, Father, that you did something for his heart. But these things were so rooted in him that it, it, was, it just couldn't be changed. He could have changed and he did change. But he allowed the doors to be open for things to come back in. And I pray, Father, that once we have rooted out all unrighteousness in our lives, that we will close every door and every avenue and every venue that, uh, that unrighteousness will try to come back in. But we'll have those closed and it will not be able to enter. 
Father, we say toda reba for this lesson. Toda reba for all of those that are listening to us out there. And we just so thankful and I appreciate their prayer and supports, th their support. Thank you, Father. In the name of Mashiach, Yahusha, Hallel to Yahuwah. Amen. Amen. So, let's, of course, we've told you about the Sefer Bible. Um, and this is, you know, it has the Father's name, Mashiach's name. If you want to order it and get a discount, 10% uh, discount, just use our name on uh, the coupon code Living Branch. And as always, you know, I'm all about trying to, um, you know, the Hebrew Ten Commandments is there for our children. To teach our children, it's just another tool to train them. Um, I've heard great reports. Um, and one of the things that I suggest, after you, after your children have an understanding of the pictures, go back through the commandments and ask them to draw you a picture of what they think about the commandments. So this is just another way to instill this. Because remember, when you're younger, you do, uh, you know, kids operate in pictures more, you know. So we want to put in, even us as adults, we operate in pictures. Join our bookmarker witnessing team. We've, this week, uh, phenomenal. I probably sent out um, close to 3,000 bookmarkers this week. So. We keeping the bookmarkers flowing. Uh, if you request it, just make sure when you go to the website here, www.bm.hebrewfoundation.org, make sure you include your complete mailing address, snail mail. Um, sometimes people put their email address. So make sure you give me your home mailing address. Okay, if you would like to support us, um, you can send in your donations by mail or PayPal or use our online giving tool, which it'll bring you to this page. Uh, you can create a user account that you can always log back in and use uh, credit card, debit cards, savings, checking accounts. But most of all, we desire your prayer that you would keep us in prayer that the Father will continue to give us lessons and that will help the Mishpacha, help us grow, help us see our character help us continue to change and be more like him. So that is our prayer. So keep us in prayer. Um, if you want to visit our websites, here they are. Um, my email address is info at living-branch.org. Uh, shoot me an email. Um, give me feedback. You know, I'm always here to help. And that's, that's what I do. That's what the Father called me to do. Okay, Ms. Bacar, this is Moray Medan Yahoo. Make sure you tune in at 4 o'clock to Moray Lamar Yahoo's uh, lesson. He's going to be giving a lesson on the calendar. I think we're getting on up there in part, so don't miss a lesson. He does have more of the lessons posted on YouTube. They're recorded, but um, make sure you get the notes off of his. They're under, uh, they're under his on his website, www.pastoryahua.com. And also, if you're looking for Set Apart music, go to setapartheart.com with our dear friend, uh, Adora. Hallelujah. All right, Ms. Bacar is more in Medan Yahoo. Make this the best day ever. And make sure you enjoy your Shabbat. Um, do things that pertain to the Father. And we just say unto all of our Mishpachah, Shabbat Shalom.